All right, so here's a question. How light is too light when we're talking about gaming mice? Because most people would agree that about 70 to 80 grams seems to be the sweet spot. You've got a ton of different options there at you know pretty decent prices, and that seems to be light enough for most people. Then you have stuff like this, the G Pro Super Light from Logitech. 60 grams this thing is, but even then you're still getting a nice medium sized solid shell with no honeycomb cutouts, and this seems to fit most people. Then you go a step below that, you have the Final Mouse Starlight 12, 45 to 50 grams, very, very light. But then you're looking at a much smaller size that most people don't agree with and also honeycomb cutouts, and you might not even be able to buy one. They're pretty damn expensive on the secondhand market. And then you have this, the Zonkonig M2K at just 23 grams. So at this weight, you basically feel like you're holding nothing. The speed at which you can accelerate and decelerate the mouse feels pretty much instant. This is basically as close as you can get to aiming purely with an empty hand. And I've got to say, it does feel like that most of the time. In fact, this is the only mouse where I can score above a 140 on Kovacs Tile Frenzy, which I honestly thought I'd never be able to hit. With the Superlight, G303 and Starlight 12, I was always capped around that 130 mark. So for me, that's a pretty big difference. Difference. But back to the original question, you know, how light is too light? Are we there with the M2K? Well, Zonkonig seemed to think that the optimal weight for a gaming mouse is zero grams, you know, essentially the lighter the better. Uh, and obviously you can't make a zero gram gaming mouse, it has to comprise of some material, but theoretically, the less momentum and the less inertia that your gaming mouse has, the better your aim potential will be. So the less weight that your gaming mouse has, the less momentum it has on your mouse pad when you're aiming, that means that it's easier to stop and easier to get going again. That also means that micro adjustments and fine tracking scenarios are much easier since there's less weight that you need to initially overcome. But let's see what Zonkonig needed to do to get down to that brutally low weight. First of all, the thing is damn small. It's about half the size of a G Pro Superlight, and so the grip that you need to use here is a very specific one. The material for the shell is also entirely carbon fiber. The result here is something that feels incredibly light and strong with no flex. There's also no side buttons, which is an interesting trade-off. Doing that would probably require a separate PCB, switches, buttons, and wiring, and so by skipping that altogether, they've probably saved themselves an easy 5 to 10 grams. Personally, I don't use side buttons for super critical stuff in game, usually stuff like healing or melee, but I'm happy to use the default keybinds for those if I need to. Now the first mouse from Zorn Koenig was the M1K, very similar to what we're looking at here, but had no scroll wheel. And luckily for the M2K, we do have a scroll wheel, that would have been a big deal breaker for me. For games like Apex, it's pretty much essential for wall bouncing and tap strafing. The bottom of the mouse is also completely hollow and the PTFE skates are absolutely tiny and the sensor that's being used here is the PMW3360. So yeah, on the surface this thing looks incredibly prototypey and unfinished, nowhere near as streamlined or polished as a G Pro Superlight but it's also less than half the weight. Then there's the main switches, and for a mouse this light, the switches also need to be extremely light. The M2K uses Japanese Omron D2F 01Fs, and they feel really, really dialed in. So far, the lightest switches that I've ever used on a gaming mouse easily would be from the G303, but these are pretty close, and personally, I'm a big fan. Now on other lightweight mice around the 40 to 50 gram mark, the cable has always been a big deal breaker for me. You just can't have this tiny mouse which weighs almost nothing and expect the weight from the cable not to be an issue. This cable on the other hand is kind of decent and to be honest, I didn't really notice it that much. When it comes to mouse cables, on one hand, you've got the really stiff heavy cables from the old days and these days you've got the really light flexible paracord. I'd argue that the perfect mouse cable is actually somewhere in between. Not so heavy that it's interfering with the control of the mouse itself, but also not so light that it's just slapping around on your desk. I currently use a kind of medium sensitivity, about 32 and a half centimeters for a full 360 on the mouse pad. If you use a high sensitivity, then the cable is going to be even less of a problem, but really low sense players will always prefer something wireless. At the end of the day, it is still a cable. If you play on a really low sense, then there's a good chance 
as it might bother you. Now, not only is this the lightest gaming mouse that I've tested, but it's also the fastest. When it comes to the click input lag, the Zorn Koenig M2K is right at the top of the chart, tied with the Razer Viper 8K. Now, just like that mouse, the M2K can go right up to 8,000 hertz polling rate, as opposed to the other mice on this list, which are capped at 1,000 hertz. And I believe Zorn Koenig are doing the same thing as Razer here, where the clicks are continuously sampled at 8,000 hertz, as opposed to the sensor, which is what's being adjusted, because I couldn't measure a difference with either of these mice, whether they're set to 1,000 hertz or 8,000 hertz. I also quickly tested the G-Wolves Hardy S Wireless and the new Fnatic Bolt. Both seem to be using generic debouncing algorithms for their mechanical switches. I also tested the new Final Mouse firmware for the Starlight 12 Phantom and saw about a four millisecond faster click response compared to the firmware that the mouse ships with. Another mouse that has been pretty popular recently is the Ninjutsu Origin 1X, but clearly they have a lot of work to do at 30 milliseconds latency from end to end. And the new Razer Viper V2 Pro, that lands about where we'd expect towards the top. Now, a further note on 8,000 hertz polling rate. It's not just a meme, you can notice smoother cursor movement and there is slightly lower input lag as well. So I do think it is something that we should be looking forward to, especially as we approach higher refresh rate monitors and more powerful hardware. Games do seem to be taking note as well in terms of support. I no longer get stuttering problems like I did in Apex when I initially tested the Viper 8K. Here I ran both the M2K and the Viper 8K at 8,000 hertz polling rate without any problems. If you do encounter problems though, dropping back to 4,000, 2,000 or 1,000 hertz is pretty easy to do. I'll also note that the M2K doesn't rely on any software to change things like DPI, polling rate or lift off distance, which I personally really appreciate. All of those things can be changed with specific button and scroll wheel combinations while the mouse is lifted in the air. Now, if it isn't clear already, this is exclusively a fingertip grip gaming mouse, which means you kind of hold it like this with only your fingertips uh, in contact with the mouse, as opposed to say a palm or claw grip where you actually do have part of your hand touching the mouse shell. So if you are currently using a big mouse with a big palm grip, then yeah, this is probably gonna be the biggest deal breaker for you. You're just not gonna be able to hold the thing comfortably. If you are using a smaller mouse though, and you do use fingertip or claw grip, I would say that the M2K is actually viable. So using myself as an example, I use a claw grip. I have medium to large hands, and I typically prefer you know a medium sized shell like a Superlight or a G303 but I actually got used to the M2K pretty quickly. Here's the grip that I typically use, basically just a claw grip. And so picking up the M2K, it kind of just fits in my hand. I don't have to force any kind of grip style or really even think about how I'm gonna hold it. It just feels really natural and just really comfortable. In the end, it's a claw fingertip grip, all fingertips in contact with the mouse. And yeah, it just feels really normal, I guess. No real conscious effort of how I'm gonna hold it. I'll mention the coding as well. This is the matte version, had absolutely no problems with it. In fact, I found it slightly better than the Superlight or the G303 and much better than the Final Mouse Starlight 12. But now let's talk about actually using this thing. Now, if you're familiar with aim trainers like Kovacs or Aimlab, these games have different scenarios which you can go through and improve at. And the general goal is to keep improving on your best score. Whenever I test a new gaming mouse, Kovacs is the first thing that I boot up just to get a general feel of the mouse and to get a bit of a reference point versus what I'm currently using. Now, my scores are nothing super impressive. I'd consider myself an average Kovacs enjoyer, but very rarely do I pick up a mouse and on the first day see a bump to all of my scores. The only time that this has happened was with the G Pro Superlight and now also with the Zorn Koenig M2K. More importantly, when it came to actual gaming, this thing felt great. In fact, in terms of aiming and just general movement, this is the best mouse that I've ever used. Aiming just felt very natural. I found myself just thinking about it a lot less. Even stuff just like moving around the map and ball bouncing, etc. that stuff felt very comfortable. I will note that I used the same sensitivity that I was using on heavier mice as well, and the same mouse pad too, which is the Arzen Hayati Otsu. Like most of you, I expected there to be some obvious deal breakers here with the M2K. I mean, just look at the thing. It looks kind of weird. The cable, for example, maybe the carbon fiber shell and the coating, maybe the side button delete, but none of these things were an issue for me at all. At the very least, maybe I expected this thing to be too light and too small and that it would be a burden to use, but it's quite the opposite. The M2K feels really good in the hand and I'm totally convinced lighter is better even below 50 grams. So some of you might be wondering this versus the Final Mouse Starlight 12. Well, you do get most of that weightless feel with the Starlight 12 as well, but for me, the M2K is just what feels 
feels better. The grip width is slightly wider and more comfortable. The coating is miles better, which left me with a more confident feel. The clicks feel much more dialed in and it's less than half the weight. The main downside is it's not wireless, which could be a big deal breaker for some. So for me, using the M2K was like an overly positive experience. Like all of my Kovacs scores went up so easily, you know, using this thing in game just felt so natural. And surprisingly, it feels really comfortable to hold and use. But I kind of have to, you know, hold myself back a little bit from hyping this thing up because I know it's not going to be like that for everyone. This experience is going to be pretty bad if you use, you know, a lot of hand contact on your mouse, like a palm grip or a claw grip, for example. If you're using something like a G703 or an EC1 or maybe even like a Razer Viper with a lot of hand contact, do not buy this thing. You will absolutely hate it. Then there is also the cost, which is probably the biggest deal breaker of them all. 300 euros for a gaming mouse makes this not only the lightest and the fastest but also the most expensive that I've ever tested and bought. Although that risk is mitigated since Zorn Koenig offer a no questions asked return for a limited duration after your purchase. And look, you're paying 300 euros here for a 23 gram piece of carbon fiber. Saying that out loud, it's insane. But you're also getting something incredibly well dialed in, the lightest and fastest gaming mouse in the world, and possibly a huge buff to your aim. So there it is the world's lightest gaming mouse. Thought this thing was gonna be really, really bad, but uh, actually it's kind of insane. So if you're interested in picking it up, I will leave it listed down below in the description. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below and I will see you all in the next one.